now we are going to talk about the salient features, a quick look at what Human Genome Project has given us in terms of information of course. Now what are the salient features? One by one we are going to analyze nine of them. The first one is that how many nucleotide bases are there? As we discussed earlier, it was approximate 3.3 billion base pairs. We have 3164.7 million nucleotide bases. This is to be crammed, okay, directly. How many bases are there in average gene? It was uh, approximated that there would be many number of base pairs in an average gene, but later on it was concluded that if an average gene is to be considered, there are as many as 3000 bases, okay, approximate idea. But yeah, there are exception. The largest gene is dystrophin. Remember it. Dystrophin is the largest gene which is responsible for uh, muscular contractions uh, and pr controlling the activities over there. This dystrophin has as much as 2.4 million bases. So, you see. While the average is of 3000 base pairs, some could have as much as 2.4 million bases and dystrophin is one of the examples. How many genes are there in human genome project? Earlier it was estimated that there are as many as 80,000 to 1,40,000 or 140,000. So that was not the true case. When the human genome was encoded, it was found that the genes are approximately 30,000, not more than that. Okay. It was totally different from earlier approximations. Now, the next point is that your and my genome is how much similar? It is 99.9% .9 similar. That is quite strange. So, we both have a similarity of 99.9% .9 at the genetic level. So, the 99.9% .9 of the nucleotides in all individuals are almost similar. They are exactly same. The point 0.1 difference makes you sitting over there totally different from me standing over here and teaching you. Then the next is 50% of the genes which have been discovered out of all, the 50% of genes which have been discovered, we do not know what function do they perform. Okay, That is one more point that supposedly they have uh, got an idea that there are approximate 30,000 genes. So, they have just encoded 15,000 of the genes which 15,000 of these 30,000 which they know what function they are performing. Remaining 50 percent they do not know yet what function is being performed by them. That is again a salient feature. It happens to be a salient feature but that should be one of our shortcomings. It should be mentioned in that but yet we have to remember it less than 2% of the genome, entire genome is a sort of wastage that you might think, but that is not the case. We will get to know why it is not a wastage, but it is only 2% of the genome which is coding for the proteins. That means out of the 3 billion base pairs, only 2% are coding for the proteins, rest all are present there as such. What, fu what function they perform? We do not know, but we get to know from this human genome project that the remaining part has repeated sequences. All right. Now, these repeated sequences are having no direct effect on the, uh, on the expression or the genetic information that is being deciphered out of these uh, genomic content. But yeah, they, they are able to put some light on chromosomes content, chromosomes own history, how the human race is evolving. That could be one important field where these repeated sequences could be of help. Okay? We can make out the evolutionary history from these repeated sequences. One more point is that the chromosome number 1 has the highest number of genes as many as 3000 genes and chromosome Y has the lowest number. Chromosome Y which is found in males along with one X. This Y chromosome has 231 genes on it which are responsible for giving the human being the characteristics of a male. Okay? And lastly, we have one salient feature that comes into scene is SNPs. One thing you have to keep in mind that there are so many repeated sequences. There are They are repeated 10,000 times as much as repetition is there that this you have to remember in that part which does not code for the genes one thing. Secondly, there is single nucleotide polymorphism that is observed in the 
non coding part of the genome now what do you understand from this term you get an idea only a single base pair in the repeated sequences they would be similar like you have a repeated sequence that is repeating as many times as 10000 times or more than that there is only one nucleotide which is different rest of the sequence is similar and such single nucleotide polymorphism otherwise called SNPs they are found in huge numbers in this region okay the non coding region has many snps where there is uh, there is a condition known as single nucleotide polymorphism where the repeated sequences will be similar only point of difference would be at a single nucleotide that means a single nucleotide is different supposedly just uh, have an idea we have a sequence a t t g g c c t a a this is being repeated many times and in every repetition this T is replaced by A supposedly next time it is replaced by C supposedly rest all is similar okay so this is known as single nucleotide polymorphism because only one base pair is replaced or it is being different rest of the things are similar and it is repeated many a time so all these things were added to our knowledge about the genetic uh, information that a human has once human genome project completed and these are the salient features that you have to remember and keep in mind because this is what we had this is this is the information for what we had invested 10 years and a huge amount of money these are the points that have come in the end in our hand and you have to keep them in mind and remember them by heart